joy in the city joy in your life joy in your family and joy everywhere in jesus name gck authority has announced the next level move from the land of honor and integrity comes two in one gck live in Ekiti State, Southwest Nigeria, the Global Crusade and Retreat, December 22 to 27, 2022. A new level of Impact Academy for Youth, Young Adults and Professionals, titled Recharge to Excel, December 27, 2022, at all 600 hours GMT, all broadcasts live on satellite, radio, television, and all our social media platforms with Jonathan White, our guest music minister. GCK, the gospel to every creature. What a day. What a service. And what a people, what a church. I pray that this day will be an unforgettable day in every life in Jesus' name. You are blessed. You'll keep on being blessed until the time you see the Lord face to face. His blessing will never diminish in your life in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. What a glorious day. What a great opportunity for your people. And what a chance to come and express our joy, express our love, express gratitude unto you. We're asking, oh Lord, you receive our praises in Jesus' name. Today, as we come to celebrate and come to worship and come to see you spiritually, we pray you'll touch every life. Amen. And we pray that the blessings of this day will overflow in every life in Jesus' name. Amen. Lay your hand visibly upon everyone. And do something unforgettable in every life. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We're coming to Haggai chapter 2. Haggai chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 6. Haggai 2, verse 6. For thus says the Lord of hosts yet once it's a little time a little while and i will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land and i will shake all nations and the desire of all nations shall come and i will fill this house with glory, says the Lord of hosts, the silver is mine, and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts, the glory of this latter house shall be greater than that of the former, says the Lord of hosts, and in this place, in this place, in this place, will I give peace, says the Lord of hosts. As you look at the book and the prophecy of Isaac of Haggai, you'll find it contains only two chapters. And yet, Haggai, as a prophet of God, was God's mouthpiece to declare God's mind and God's message along with God's mercy to God's people. If you have been studying the Bible, you might see that Agai is referred to 
as one of the minor prophets. Not minor because the message is minor. No. It's called the minor prophet or the other minor prophets because their books are not as long, as big as Isaiah, as Jeremiah, as Daniel, as Ezekiel. But you'll find as you come to all the minor prophets so-called, and as you come to Haggai in particular, he has a major message with multiple promises from the almighty God and from the mighty prince of peace with great power and with great miracles for people that are misplaced, mistreated, and minimized. And his prophecy continues till the millennium, millennial period. Haggai then has a message containing encouragement for Israel and for the church. Haggai has a message with warning for Israel and for the church. Haggai calls us to righteousness. He calls us to commitment. He calls us to work, to work for the Lord. And he calls us to the promised blessing, present blessing, and the prophecy of end time events. As we look at the message today titled, The New Dawn of Greater Glory. Glory is coming in your life. Coming to your family. And coming to the church. And it's a greater glory. What you have never seen before, the Lord will do in your life, you will see. Mighty, mighty things from today will begin to roll over and over in your life in Jesus' name. Greater glory coming in the church. It's a new dawn. And it's a new day. And it's a new dispensation. I pray every one of us without exception will be partakers of this in Jesus' name. The message from Agar, the new dawn of greater glory. Three things we're going to quickly look at. Number one, the promise at the new dedication. The promise at the new dedication. Number two, a prayer in the new dispensation. It's a new dispensation. This day in your life, in your family, in the church at large, marks a new beginning. And it marks a new dispensation. Our prayer in the new dispensation. Number three, the power of renewed devotion. As our guy calls us to a new devotion, he reveals the power. It reveals the possibilities we have in Christ. And we have, as we look at what the Lord said he will do. And he said, the glory of this latter house will be greater than that of the former. It is beginning to happen. Point number one, the promise of the new dedication. As I come to Haggai chapter 2, and you read from verse 4. The last line of verse 4 says, For I am with you, says the Lord of hosts. That's the promise he has given us. And he says, from today, anywhere you turn, anywhere you go, when challenges come in your life, when difficulties confront you, you must remember that the creator of the heavens and the earth, the creator that has all the power, in heaven and in earth, and with him nothing shall be impossible. He says in that verse 4, I am with you, says the Lord of hosts. That's what the Lord Jesus Christ, after his resurrection, that's what he assures us, everyone in the church, at the whole church. Matthew chapter 28, reading there from verse 18. 
It says in Matthew 28, verse 18, it says, Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power, there's no limitation here, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. And lo, church, tell me, I am with you. It's nearer to you than your problem. It's nearer than the sickness. It's nearer than the powers of the enemy. He assures us, I am with you always, even unto the edge of the world. And the people of God said, Haggai, Haggai chapter 1, reading from verse 13. Then speak Haggai, the Lord's messenger, in the Lord's message unto the people, saying, I am with you, says the Lord. That tells us then, there's nothing for you to fear. It will solve all your problems. It will save every soul. And whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved in Jesus' name. As Haggai introduces us to the promises of God, and he begins with, I am with you. Number two, he says in Haggai chapter 2, verse 5. Haggai chapter 2, verse 5. According to the word that I covenanted, that I covenanted with you, when you came out of Egypt, so my spirit remaineth among you. See that. The promise is given us from this day, you will never be alone. You will not be an orphan. The spirit of the living God, the Holy Ghost, will abide with you. He will quicken you every time, energize you every time, empower you every time. And whatever you lack in your life, that comforter, he comes to your life and he says, my spirit remains with you. That's the assurance Christ has given us. In John chapter 14, reading from verse 16, John 14, 16, I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, and that he may abide with you, how long? Forever. There are many people that will say, I don't know whether the Spirit is there or not. I was saved such and such a time, sanctified such and such a time, I remember the day I was filled, immersed, baptized in the Holy Ghost. I don't know whether he's there or not. He will abide with you forever. And every gift has given you the Holy Ghost. That will abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. Because it sees him not. Neither knoweth him. But ye know him. For he dwelleth with you. And shall be in you. Somebody said, Amen. Amen. Come back to Agai chapter 2. It says, Now, number one, I will be with you. I'll never leave you alone. Number two, my spirit remains among you. Number three, I will fill this house with glory. Look at Haggai chapter 2. Haggai chapter 2, verse 7. In Agai chapter 2, reading here from verse 7, here he tells us, I will shake the nations, and the desire of all nations shall come, and I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord of hosts. What a promise. I will fill this house which house? This house, the house of God. But also, you there, you are the habitation of God. I am the habitation of God. I am the temple of God. It will fill your body with His glory. The light of His glory, the power in His glory will come to you. 
you will not be as you were before in Jesus' name. Malachi chapter 3. In Malachi chapter 3, telling us, you'll fill this house with glory. It says in chapter 3, verse 1, Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord, whom ye seek, shall suddenly come to his temple. Even the messenger of the covenant, whom ye delight in, behold, he shall come, says the Lord of hosts. It's coming to you today. As Savior, he'll get your side there. As healer, he'll get to you there. As sanctifier, he will get to you there. As the baptizer and the Holy Ghost, he will get to you there. You will be filled with his glory. You will carry his glory with you. You look at him, you look unto him, 2 Corinthians chapter 3. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, reading here in verse 18, but we all, how many of us? We all, how many are going to be blessed today? How many are going to carry the glory of God? We all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image, from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. That glory will never fade away in your life, never fade away in your family. You will carry the glory of the Lord in Jesus' name. Number one, it's going to be with you forever. Number two, his spirit remains among us. Number three, I will fill this house with glory. Number four, the glory of this latter house shall be greater, shall be higher, shall be bigger shall be more than the glory of the former. Look at Haggai chapter 2. Haggai chapter 2. And I'm reading here from verse 9. It says, The glory of this latter house shall be greater than that of the former. Whatever you've got before, greater things are coming. Whatever miracles you've seen before, greater things are coming. And whatever joy, whatever happiness you had before, greater is coming to your life in Jesus' name. Whatever provisions you have got from the Lord, greater, greater will come in your life in Jesus' name. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than that of the former, says the Lord of hosts. And then number five of the promises, in this place, there's something waiting for you here. Every time you come here, just stepping in and sitting down there, before you even begin to pray, there's something waiting for you. Every time you hear the word of God here, there's something waiting for you. That's why it says in the latter part, in the second part of verse 9, and in this place, thank God I have something in this place. I say, thank God I have something in this place. In this place will I give peace, says the Lord of hosts. All your confusion will vanish away. All the conflict in your family will vanish away. You are at a crossroad, you don't know how to go. As you have come to this place today, according to the promise of the Lord, He will give you peace in Jesus' name. The peace that passes understanding. The peace that goes beyond your calculation, the Lord will grant unto you. You will not go out of this place and then as you are going, the devil will trouble your life. No, the Prince of Peace will reign in your life. Philippians chapter 4, reading from verse 7. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your heart and your mind through Jesus Christ. I thought the church would say, Amen. Amen. Come back to Haggai, 
chapter 2. And I'm reading from verse 19. Agai chapter 2. Reading from verse 19. And see what the Lord is telling you. It says in verse 19. Is the seed yet in the barn? Yea, as yet the vine, and the fig tree, and the pomegranate, and the olive tree, has not brought forth. From this day, I will bless thee. From this day, what's the date? date? Go and write that down. From today, you turn here, blessing will meet you. You turn to the other side, blessing will meet you. As you go to work tomorrow, blessing will meet you. As you be with your wife, your children at home, blessing upon blessing in your family in Jesus' name. From this day, from this day, wipe those tears away from this day take the unbelief away from this day i says the almighty god i will bless you i am blessed somebody there i am blessed Zechariah chapter eight that's just the next book Zechariah chapter eight i'm reading from verse 11 it says, but now I will not be unto the residue of this people as in the former days, says the Lord of hosts, for the siege shall be prosperous. The vine shall give her fruit. The ground shall give her increase. And the heavens shall give their due. And I will cause the remnant of this people to possess all these things. You will not be a loser, you will be a possessor. <laughs> Verse 23, thus says the Lord of hosts, In those days it shall come to pass, that ten men shall take hold out of all the languages of all the nations, even shall take hold of the skirt, of the clothes, of the garment of him that's a Jew, that's a believer, saying, We will go with you. For we have heard that God is with you. They will hear, your neighbors will hear, your friends will hear, your co workers will hear that a new thing. A new blessing is coming upon your life. It will show on your face. It will show in your language. You will know I'm a blessed man, I'm a blessed woman, I'm a blessed child of God. Look at the promise of God. I am with you, he'll never leave you. My spirit remains with you, the spirit will abide with you. I will fill this house with glory. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than that of the former. In this place, in this place, I will give you peace. From this day, I will bless thee. Look at Haggai chapter 2, verse 23. This is number 7 now. It says in chapter 2, verse 23, Haggai, in that day, and this is your day, says the Lord of hosts, will I take thee, O Zerubbabel, my servant, the son of Saltiel, says the Lord, and will make thee as a signet, for I have chosen thee, says the Lord of hosts. That sentence there, I will make you as a signet, a signet, if you look at the first four letters, S I G N sign. It's a signature right there. You see, in those olden days, uh, they didn't uh, use rubber stamp, they used copper, copper stamp. What I mean by that is, you know, sometimes you have a signature 
or whatever you write on the rubber stamp. And when you have written the letter to give a note of authority, you put that stamp there. In those days, what they had was a ring, the ring of the king. And the signature of the king, or the image of the king, or the name of the king is right there on the ring. And they called it a signet. And if they wrote anything, if they promised anything, if they gave a covenant, they'll put that stamp on it. That means anywhere that thing goes, that is authority, it cannot be changed. And in this Agai chapter 2, verse 23, after he had given a lot of promises, he now says, you, servant of God, you will become a signature. And then that signature, whatever you say, and you put that name of Jesus, and you say it's coming from you, Satan cannot alter that thing. The demons cannot change that thing. Let me show you an example of what, I'm, what the scripture means. Daniel chapter 6, verse 17. Daniel chapter 6, verse 17. The signature. And his stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the dead. And the king sealed it with his own signature. The king stamped it with his own signature. The king authorized it with his own signature and with the signature of his laws that the purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel. That's what it means when it says you are now a signature. I am the signature of God now. Somebody there, I am the signature of God. In, in Esther chapter 8. In Esther chapter 8, we're reading about that same thing. The seal or the signature. It says in Esther chapter 8 verse 8. Write ye also for the Jews as it liketh you. You remember the story? They wanted to destroy all the Jews in Shushan. And then Esther went to the king and said, Help me. They want to destroy me and my people. And the king said, Who is that? They said, Haman. But there was a problem. Even though the king wanted to help, something had been written, something had been signed. And in the law of the medicine, the passions, once something is written, they cannot change. How are we going to change this? Every negative prophecy against your life this morning will be changed in Jesus' name. Negative dream will be changed in Jesus' name. A curse, a yoke, everything is changed in Jesus' name. How will this be changed? That's why we're come, the signet now. And the king told es Esther and Mordecai, write ye also for the Jews as it liketh you in the king's name and seal it with the king's ring that's a signet for the writing which is written in the king's name and sealed with the king's ring be no man reverse you are getting something here this morning that will never be reversed <laughs> blessing that will never be reversed Provision that will never be reversed because of the signature. Because of the signature, whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth is loosed in heaven. Today is a day of special, irreversible blessing in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. Point number two. A prayer in the new dispensation. Our prayer in the new dispensation. We need to understand about dispensation. A dispensation is a period of time. For example, with the building of Solomon's temple, 
It was a new dispensation to them. God promised them what he didn't promise even from the time of creation until that time. It was a new dispensation. Number two, with the uncommon ministry of the uncompromising prophets, it was a new dispensation for them. Number three, after the Babylonian captivity, they had gone to Babylon for 70 years. And now they came back. After the Babylonian captivity, a new dispensation began for them. Actually, we call Haggai a post-exilic prophet. That means a prophet after the time of exile. And for them, it was a new dispensation. Not only that, number four, or the building of the post-exilic temple, this temple that they were building with Nehemiah, with Ezra, and then Haggai coming in with Zechariah to prophesy, it was a new dispensation. And now at the first advent of Christ, when Christ came and Christ was born, another dispensation began. And what never happened in the Old Testament, the leper being cleansed, they were cleansed, the dead being raised with just a single word, and then the sick being healed, all the sick people being healed without exception. It was a new dispensation for them. Will you remember? Pentecost began another new dispensation at the pouring out of the Spirit of the Lord. It was a new dispensation now was the calling and the conversion of Paul the Apostle. A new dispensation began because before that time, all the Gentile world did not taste, did not have the great power outpouring of the power of God. But at the conversion of Paul, at the calling of Paul, a new dispensation began and everywhere the power of God was made known. Uh, look at his own language about this dispensation we're talking about in Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. I'm reading here from verse 2. It says, if you have heard of the dispensation, you see that? If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which has given me unto your word, how that by revelation, he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote aforetime, afore, in few words, whereby when you read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. And then in verse 5, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy prophets, holy apostles and prophets, by the Spirit, that the Gentiles shall be fellow heirs, and of the same body, and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. So you will see, it was a new dispensation there. Now, the temple had been built, and it says, my house shall be called the house of prayer. What kind of prayer? We're coming to Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles, chapter 6. I read from verse 19 and verse 20. A prayer in the new dispensation. As the Lord has brought us to this new dispensation, look at our prayer. It says in verse 19, Second Chronicles, chapter 6. I respect therefore to the prayer of thy servant and to his supplication. O Lord my God, to hearken unto the cry and the prayer of which thy servant prayed before thee, that thine ears, thine eyes may be open upon this house day and night. Any meeting we have here in the day, like today, in the night, like tomorrow, like Thursday, or any other day, 
the eyes of the Lord will be open. As you come in, he will see you. He will see your need. He will meet with your need. Then he says, upon the place whereof thou hast said, thou wouldest put thy name there to hearken unto the prayer which thy servant prayeth towards this place. Thank God. You cannot say, I don't have faith. No, already. There is the understanding. There is the covenant of the Lord. Anyone that comes in here and you open your mouth and you tell the Lord spiritually what your needs are, physically what your needs are, the Lord's ears will be opened unto your prayer. Look at verse 24. And if thy people, Israel, be put to the wars before thee, before the enemy, because they have sinned against thee, I shall return and confess thy name and pray. You see that? And pray and make supplication before thee in this house. Then hear thou from heaven. Forgive their sin, the sin of thy people Israel, and bring them again into the land when thou gavest to them and to their fathers. Somebody say amen. In this place, while we pray, there will be forgiveness. There will be redemption. There will be mercy. And whatever blessings we have lost, as you come, as you pray, you will recover them in Jesus' name. Look at verse 26. When the heaven is shut up, and there is no rain, because they have sinned against thee, yet if they pray towards this place, and confess thy name and turn from their sin when thou dost afflict them. It says, if there's poverty, if there's unemployment, if there's joblessness, if there's a local famine, or if there is a wide, a statewide or national, nation, nationwide famine, and you come to this place, that famine will stop in your family. That unemployment will stop in your family. That scarcity and drought will stop in your family in Jesus' name. Verse 27, then hear thou from heaven and forgive the sin of thy servants and of thy people Israel when thou hast taught them the good way. Here the Lord will teach us the good way of the Lord in Jesus' name. Wherein they shall walk and send rain upon the land which thou hast given unto thy people for an inheritance. Look at verse 29. Then what prayer or what supplication soever, whatsoever we ask in prayer. It says what prayer or whatsoever it may be we have supplication that shall be made of any man. Any man. Anybody there? Any man, anybody there is going to answer your prayer. You cannot say he doesn't answer me. A new dispensation has come. I never see a miracle. A new dispensation has come. Any man, every man, thank God, there is answer to your prayer today. When everyone shall know his own sore, his own problem, and his own grief, and shall spread forth his signs, in this house, then hear thou from heaven that dwelling place and forgive and render to every man according unto all his ways whose heart thou knowest. For thou only knowest the hearts of the children of men. Now, verse 31 that they may fear thee and walk in thy ways so long as they live in the land which thou gavest unto their fathers. He will give us grace not to backslide. You will not backslide. I'm talking to somebody there I said you will not backslide. The Lord will keep you to the end in Jesus' name. Now we talk about our prayer. Our prayer in the new dispensation. 
Look at verse 32. Moreover, concerning the stranger, those who are not the members of the commonwealth of Israel, those who are not Jews, those are Gentiles, and they're coming in. And it says, moreover, concerning the stranger, which is not of thy people Israel, all our invitees, as they come in here, blessing upon blessing upon their lives, in Jesus' name. Unbelievers will come here, they'll be blessed with salvation. They'll be blessed with healing. They'll be blessed with deliverance. They'll be blessed with prosperity. Even those who have never stepped in church and they're coming to this church for the first time in their lives, it says, moreover, concerning the stranger, which is not of thy people, Israel, but is come from a far country. For thy great name, say, and thy mercy and thy mighty hand, and I stretch out and if they come, and what do they do? And pray in this house. Yep, your neighbors who are sick, let them come and pray here. Healing definitely will come to them. You have your neighbors who are tormented and oppressed, and you say they are not Christian, they are not believers, they are not members of the church. Bring them. The moment they step in here, miracle will happen to them in Jesus' name. If they come and pray in this house, verse 33, then hear thou from the heavens, even from thy dwelling place, and do according to all that the stranger calleth to thee for. Do according to all that the stranger, non-member, according to all that they call upon you for. To know that they, that they ask, all the people of the earth may know thy name, and fear thee. As, the, as does the people Israel, and may know that this house which I have built is called by thy name. I thought I'd hear some amen there. <laughs> Numbers 40. Now, my God, let I beseech you, thine eyes be open. Let thine ears att be attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. Now therefore arise, O Lord God, into thy resting place, thou and the ark of thy strength. Let thy priests, O Lord God, be clothed with salvation, and thy saints rejoice in goodness. You will rejoice today. Number one is the promise. Number two is her prayer. Number three now, the power of renewed devotion. The power of renewed devotion. Having come to this new temple, new tabernacle, new house of God, having come here, and the Lord wants to begin a new thing with you, a new thing with me, a new thing with the old church. He now wants us to have devotedness that were devoted to the Lord and the power coming from heaven that will now come into our lives as a result of this new dedication of the temple as well as of the believer today. The power of renewed devotion. We're coming to Haggai chapter 2 and I read from verse 5, from verse 4 and from verse 5. Haggai chapter 2 verse 4. Look at this. Yet now be strong. Mark that. O Zerubbabel says the Lord. And second time be strong O Joshua the son of Josedek, the high priest, and the third time, be strong, all ye people of the land, says the Lord. You see here in this verse 4, it says, the time of weakness is over. The time of trembling is over. And the time of saying, I cannot do this. I cannot do that. 
that time is over in your life. I can. I can. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And from this day, anywhere you are, you are here, you carry power back home. You are here, you carry power back to the field. You come here, you carry power to your working place. And let the weak say, let the weak say, let the weak say, I am strong. Am strong. He tells Zerubbabel, the prince of the people. He tells Joshua, the priest of the people. And he tells the whole congregation, the whole people, the priest, the priest, the people, one by one. And he says, be strong. You are strong from now on. No weakness in your life anymore. Your heart is strong. Your mind is strong. Your life is strong. Now in Joshua chapter 14. Joshua chapter 14. Chapter 14, and we're reading from verse 11. As yet, I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. As my strength was then, even so is my strength now. For war, both to go out and to come in. Have I lost my congregation? <laughs> Caleb said, I am. Not that I was. I used to be. I remember the good old days when Moses sent us out. I remember I had backbone. I had conviction. I had courage. And I went there and I came back and I said, let us go up at once, for we are well able to overcome. And Caleb did not say, but you know, many years have come and gone. But you know, times have changed. But you know, much water has passed under the bridge. But you know, we have been confronted with this and that. No, cut that away from your mouth. Language of pity, cut it off. Language of tiredness, cut it off. Language of weakness, cut it off. Language of I cannot, cut it off. Change your vocabulary. Now I can. I said now I can. I said now I can. As yet I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. As my strength was then, even so is my strength now. For war, both to go out and to come in. Now, therefore, somebody tell me, verse 12, give me this mountain. Give me this mountain. Give me this mountain. You will face new challenges with new power, with new courage. And whatever challenges before you, you'll be able to say, praise the Lord. I am even stronger today than I was many years ago. Give me this mountain whereof the Lord spake in that day. For thou hadest in that day how the Anakims were there. And the cities were great and fenced. If so be the Lord will be with me, the Lord will be with you. Then I shall be able. Then I shall be able. Somebody there. Then I shall be able. Then I shall be able. There is no mountain that confronts you. You will not be able to conquer. Somebody there. I am able. My God is able. The Lord is able. And the greater one that abides in me is able. I will be able to drive them out. 
and the, as the Lord has said. Come back, Haggai chapter 2. Number one, be strong. The power of the Lord now abides in you. You are strong in Jesus' name. Haggai chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 4. It says, Yet now, be strong, O Zerubbabel, says the Lord. Be strong, O Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest. And be strong, O ye people of the land. For the Lord, says the Lord, and work. And work. And tell me, work. We are going to work in Jesus' name. He has given us work to do. And we are not going to, you know, look back, think back. Can I? May I? You have the liberty, you'll work for the Lord. I said you'll work for the Lord. Actually, if you look at Mark chapter 14, chapter 13. Mark chapter 13, reading from verse 34. Mark chapter 13, verse 34. Mark 13, 34. For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey, who left his house and gave authority to his servants, all his servants, and to every man his work. And to every man his work. Say that with me. And to every man his work. Say that again. Uh, there, there is no redundant uh, member in the church of the living God. He gave to every man. He has given it to you. I'm talking about you there. He has given it to you. I'm talking about you there. He has given it to you. And you will do the work of the Lord in Jesus' name. He has given to every man his work and the power to do it. And the power to overcome. And the power to succeed. That power comes to you right now. You will not fail. You will not falter. Give me a good church. Amen. Amen. Number one, be strong. Any strong person there today? And then number two, and work. Anybody going to work for the Lord there today? Thank God you all do it. Haggai chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 5. Haggai chapter 2, and here we're reading from verse 5. In Haggai chapter 2, verse 5, According to the word that I covenanted with you, when you came out of Egypt, so my spirit remains with you. Tell me the last three words there. Tell me out aloud. I said, tell me the last three words. Fear ye not. You are now on top of every situation in your life. In the dark, fear ye not. In the day, fear ye not. Whatever dreams may come, fear ye not. Whatever the enemy say or do, fear ye not. Whatever past issues are trying to come up, fear ye not. Whatever medical reports you have on, a, on an x-ray, fear ye not. You are not going to overcome that thing in Jesus' name. It says, fear ye not. The Lord will deliver you from every fear. I say, chapter 8, verse 12, I say, chapter 8, verse 12, say ye not, a confederacy, to all them to whom these people shall say, a confederacy, neither fear ye their fear, nor be afraid. Neither fear ye their fears, nor be afraid. People around you might be afraid. You must talk confidently. You must walk confidently. You must live confidently. Why? How? How is it other people are fearing? And even if a confederacy, a community of fear, and it says for you, you must not fear. Verse 18, behold, I and the children 
and the children at home today? Behold I and the children and the children of God at home here today. I am the children whom God, whom the Lord has given me and for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts that dwelleth in Mount Zion. You will not fear. Isaiah chapter 35, I'm reading from verse 4. Isaiah chapter 35. Here it is now in verse 4. Say to them that of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. The Lord is speaking to you directly. You owe debts, you are afraid, how am I going to pay this day? A divine supply will come. It says, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. Even God with a recompense, he will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened. Ah, any amen there? And the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as an heart. And the tongue of the dumb shall sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out and streams in the desert. The sage and highway shall be there. A way, it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those. The wayfaring men, the fools shall not err therein. No lion shall be there. Nor any ravenous beast shall go up thereon. It shall not be found there. But the redeemed of the Lord shall walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return. And come to Zion with songs. And everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall, they shall take joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away from your life from your family sorrow and sign shall flee away chapter 41 of isaiah isaiah chapter 41 i'm reading from verse 10 fear thou not for i am with thee be not dismayed for i am thy god i will strengthen thee Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee, angry against thee, shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing. And they that strive against thee shall perish. Thou shalt seek them and shalt not find them. Even them that contended with thee. They that war against thee shall be as nothing and as a scene of noise. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying, Fear not, I will help you. Fear not, thou warm Jacob, and ye men of Israel, I will help thee, says the Lord, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Behold, I will make you a new sharp threshing instrument, having teeth. Thou shalt thresh the mountains and beat them small, and shall make the hills as chaff. Isaiah chapter 54. Isaiah chapter 54. I read from verse 4. Fear not, for thou shall not be ashamed whatever comes whatever happens the lord is assuring you you will not be ashamed neither be thou confounded for thou shalt not be put to shame for thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth and thou shalt remember not thou shalt not remember the reproach of thy widowhood anymore. Verse 14 in righteousness 
thou shalt be established. Thou shalt be far from oppression. For thou shalt not fear. And from terror, it shall not come near thee. It shall not come near thee. It shall not come near thee. Verse 17, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. No matter who is behind that weapon, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And the righteousness is of me, says the Lord. Don't be tired. Give me a good amen. amen. Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 1. But now does this the Lord that created thee, O Jacob. He that formed thee, O Israel, fear not. Somebody say, fear not. Look at the person beside you, eyeball to eyeball, and say, fear not. Look at the other side, eyeball to eyeball, and say, fear not. Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burnt. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Look at verse 18. Remember ye not the former things. A new day has come. A new dawn has come. Forget the past. For remember ye not the former things. Neither consider the things of old. Behold. Behold. My brother, my sister, there, behold, I will do a new thing. Now, now, today, now, somebody say today. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? And even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. That new day has started for you, for me, for us as the old church. Forget the past. Don't talk like the past. Don't cry like the past. Don't mourn like the past. A new day has come. For me. I said for me. I said for me. For you. For you. I said for you, rise up to a new day. Rise up to a new dawn. A new day has come. A new dawn has come. And the Lord has promised that he's going to begin that new thing right now. He's giving us prophecies. He's giving us promises. He's giving us power. He's giving us open door. Open your mouth and tell the Lord, oh Lord, here I am for the new thing. Here I am for the new day. The past is gone. All the sorrows of the past, gone. Sickness of the past, gone. Calamities of the past, gone. Oppression of the past, gone. Weakness of the past, gone. Everything of the past, gone. A new day has now come. A new day has now come. Rise up to that new day. Rejoice in that new day. Receive, in the, receive the blessing of that new day. A new day. A new dawn. This is a new dispensation. And we ought to have new, renewed devotion. And be strong. Let all the weaknesses vanish away. Strong in your heart. Strong in your mind. Strong in your will. Strong in your devotion. Strong in your commitment. Strong in your consecration. Be strong. Be strong. Be strong. Let the weak say, I am strong. Sicknesses are gone. Those diseases are gone. And then commit yourself to the work he has not given you to do. Be strong and work. Be strong and work. 
be strong and work. And fear ye not. The Lord is with you, and fear ye not. His spirit abides with you, and fear ye not. His power and strength will support you, and fear ye not. He'll do a new thing, fear ye not. He'll roll all the mountains away, fear ye not. Face the future with courage, with strength, with devotion, with determination, with consecration. Face the future hand in hand with the Almighty God that cannot fail. A new day has begun. A new dawn is here. A new dispensation is starting in your life today. In Jesus' name we pray. Remember, there is forgiveness here today. There is redemption here today. There is salvation here today. Christ died for every one of us on the cross of Calvary. And he says, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That means, as you come to the Lord, no matter what you have done, no matter where you have been, and you say, Lord, forgive me, already assures us, that there's forgiveness today has bowed and eyes closed. Anywhere you are in the auditorium here, anywhere you are in any other church location in the whole country or outside the country, or you are in your own home and you are here in the world and you want that redemption, you want that salvation, you want that forgiveness, you want that grace of God to flow into your life. Wherever you are, raise up your hand, and we're going to pray, and immediately God will forgive you and save you, and write a new name, your name in heaven, even today. Anywhere, anywhere, raise up that hand, raise up that hand, and accept the mercy of God, the forgiveness of God, the grace of God right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray according to your promise, that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I pray for all these people, forgive their sin. Amen. Cleanse their hearts. Change their lives. Grant them your salvation in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us be a witness with their heart that all their sins are forgiven. That a new life has now come. Let them go, Lord. Go forth. In the strength of this new faith and live in newness of life in Jesus' name. Thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Now you know that God has promised us that a new day is beginning. A new dawn is beginning. And the Lord wants to start you now with a load of blessings. Carry go. I said, carry go. You carry blessings home today in Jesus' name. The ceiling available. Miracle available. Deliverance available. Answered prayer available. Power available. All trans available. Prosperity available. Provision available. And the deep desires of your heart, day after the day, God will fulfill your desires. You will be strong. I said, you will be strong. All those mountains before you will vanish away in Jesus' name. Jobs for the jobless. Power for the weak. 
Anointing that breaks every yoke will come upon your life there. All the yokes are broken in Jesus' name. Where are you? You must get something. Where are you? You must get something and carry the blessing of God back home today. Raise up that hand, anointed hands and blessings coming upon your life untold in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, for everyone without exception. Every man, every woman, every boy, every girl. Oh, Lord, I pray, everyone here, everyone everywhere, I pray that this will be a special day in every life in Jesus' name. Any sickness there, any infirmity there, any mountain of oppression there, I command you, Come out in Jesus' name. Mountain of incurable disease. Be removed in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray your mighty and healing hand will touch your people right now. By your stripes, we're healed. By your stripes, he's healed. By your stripes, she's healed. Touch them, heal them in Jesus' name. Make them stronger than their enemies. All those powers of darkness, occultic powers, demonic power, I break that thing right now in Jesus' name. Rise up and be free. Rise up and be free. Lord, I pray for those who have like blindness, like paralysis, like kidney problem, like somehow what they call incurable disease. Deformity, infirmity. I speak the word of miracle to everyone now. Receive the miracle in Jesus' name. Those blind eyes be opened in Jesus' name. Stroke, paralysis, rise up and walk in Jesus' name. And all that they have said is incurable. Receive the touch of the Lord right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. Job for the jobless. Provision for the poor. Employment for those unemployed. Let there be provision for everyone now in Jesus' name. Those who are laboring, struggling under heavy debt. Lord, miraculously provide for them. Wipe their tears away. The barren receive your miracle children right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray you grant everyone power. Everyone power. To my right, to my left, in front of me here, at the galleries, in all the various locations. Power in Jesus' name. Make the weak strong. Make the weak strong. Make the sad happy. Let your strength come to everyone. And spiritually sanctified believers. Fill us with the Holy Ghost. Give us the tool to do your work. And from now, failure is gone. Fear is gone. Strengthen your people, Lord. And today, I pray something new will happen to everyone. And day after day, day after day, glory, 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 greater glory. And greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Let there be confirmation in every life. I thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name I pray.